Hello, and welcome to County Update. Today, we'll take you to the Gainesville Raceway for the Alachua County Sheriff's Beat the Heat program, giving would-be street racers the chance to face off legally on the track against the Sheriff's Office, all while educating area youth and adults on the dangers of street racing. County Waste Alternatives is looking to stock up its Tools for Schools program and keep some unused school supplies from the landfill. County Public Safety and the Federal Emergency Management Agency will show us what we can do to keep our pets safer this hurricane season, and we'll see how the county's new Downtown Organic Farmers Garden could help the community eat healthier and save energy. If you have the need for speed, save it for the track. That's the message of the Alachua County Sheriff's Office's Beat the Heat program. And as we're about to see, the program's safety first message is reaching would-be street racers and keeping Alachua County roads and drivers safer. One fast car runs flat 10 sometimes. Oh yeah, would not want to be caught with that behind me. Who would? But if you've ever wondered whether or not you could take an Alachua County Sheriff's Office patrol car, there's one way you can find out without getting a ticket or going to jail. The county's Beat the Heat program. I've been affiliated in a competition driver since 2001. The Beat the Heat program actually started up back in uh, around 1984. Uh, an officer uh, from Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, Don Roberts, actually started the program. He's actually the uh, the, the ILC of the Gainesville Raceway now. Um, after he retired with Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, he came over and uh, presented this information to uh, uh, the sheriff that we had at the time, which was Sheriff Ulrich, and um, they decided it was something they wanted to get started in our community. Drag racing was something that was real big back in the uh, 60s and 70s, and it kind of uh, faded away, and um, then it all came back to service when a certain movie came out, and all of a sudden people start wanting to fix their cars up in uh, and, and street race. That's when the sheriff's office took action using a modified out of service patrol vehicle and components confiscated from auto theft and drug investigations. No tax dollars are used to fund Beat the Heat. The program has continued under current sheriff Sadie Darnell. The sheriff is, is a big backer of Beat the Heat and we really appreciate her support. She's offering an alternative to these young people and we're trying to influence them in a positive way and I really appreciate it. The sheriff decided it was something that they wanted to do to get the attention of those people who enjoy motorsports. And it has all over the country and the world. When I joined I was the 13th member and uh, we had a lot of meetings and tried to figure out why we weren't growing and we made a few changes and now we're one of the fastest growing youth programs in the world and we don't use any tax dollars. Well, we've already gone international. I was sent to London last year by Universal Pictures for the release of the DVD, The Fast and the Furious, and they built me a Wascom, Texas police car, and I raced against the guys from The Fast and the Furious at Santa Pod Raceway. When the event was over, we gave that car to the London police, and they are campaigning that Wascom, Texas police car uh, to race the young people in London. But the program is about more than just drag racing. Drag racing is about 5% of what we do. 95% of what we do as an organization has to do with education. We talk to them about the importance of staying in school, getting an education, stay off drugs, and uh, we, of course we combat illegal street racing, but the use of seat belts and making good choices. We visit every high school in our county uh, about twice a semester. We talk about aggressive driving, DUI, road rage, uh, and illegal street racing. Um, however, it's a sport that uh, we find it's, it's a lot of fun. However, it's a time and a place for it. And that place is the racetrack for a lot of reasons. Number one, if it's on the street, it's illegal. All right, you can be arrested. Um, what you have to think about as, as a driver, uh, when you, you want to compare the street compared to the track, uh, the first thing is this, a, this is a controlled environment. It's been authorized uh, to come out and compete 
in a, in a drag racing fashion where it's safe. So we have a controlled environment, whereas on the streets, you don't have any control. People can pull out in front of you. You have animals, deers, things like that can come out and uh, jump across the street, cause you to swerve, lose control, and uh, wind up striking a fixed object or someone. And the track also provides an opportunity to stress other racing safety measures, like seat belts, helmets, and roll cages. It seems like the message is reaching its target audience. Here is safer. It's a track, controlled environment. Out in the street, I mean, one's probably not allowed. Two, um, you never know what pedestrian might come out or, you know, an uncontrolled environment. Still, some are harder to sell on the idea. I had a mother tell me one time I was doing clinics to teach young people that come to the track how to properly drag race to get them off the street. And this mother told me, she said, I could just pinch your head off. I said, why do you want to pinch my head off? She said, you taught my son how to drag race. I said, he knew how to illegal street race. I just taught him how to drag race, so he's out the track with us now. And she said, well, I really don't want him hanging out that racetrack with all those undesirables. I said, have you ever been to a drag strip? She said, no. I said, well, one thing, there's not a lot of undesirables that hang out at a drag strip. And if your 17-year-old son is hanging out with 20 cops, what better place for him to hang out than with 20 cops? There's not going to be any drinking. There's not going to be any drugs or drive-bys. Uh, I think that's a, well, I'd want my 17-year-old to hang out. So she changed her mind, and I brought her to a drag strip, and I gave her a ride in my car, and she's been a fan ever since. And Beat the Heat is even helping to make fans for some of the most unpopular people on the planet, traffic enforcement officers. This is an opportunity for me to get out and uh, interact with people hey, in a different way. Because what I do normally, you know, when they see me, they don't like to see me, they don't want to talk to me because they've done something wrong, and nine times out of 10, they're probably going to get a citation. Uh, however, in this atmosphere here, I can come out and uh, interact with them and, and also share the reasons why we do what we do as far as traffic enforcement. It's good for the police agencies and the fire agencies because young people see us in a different light. All of a sudden, we're not just the popo. They see us as a fellow racer. You know, we're still the police. And then we talk to police and we say, if you see a kid with a uh, tailpipe on his Honda that looks like a coffee can and he's got a big wing on there, he's got a wild paint job, if he's not doing anything wrong, don't hassle him. That's the muscle car of their generation. It may not be something you like, but apparently he likes it or he wouldn't do it like that. And pull up beside him and tell him he's got a nice car and invite him to come to the track and uh, come out and try to beat the heat. And we make a lot of friends that way. For more information on the Alachua County Sheriff's Office Beat the Heat program, call 352-367-4000. And don't forget to look for them at the Gainesville Raceway. For County Update, I'm Alan Yetter. If you could help a child get the school supplies he or she needs and keep the landfill from filling up, would you do it? Well, you can. And Alachua County Waste Alternatives Tools for Schools program is making it easy. Making sure kids do well in school sometimes takes a little extra. And Alachua County Waste Alternatives is working to see to it that students and teachers have what they need for the upcoming school year. Even if it doesn't seem like much, little things can mean a lot. There's a great need for teachers to supplement what they can give to our students in our community. We know teachers in this community that spend over $500 a year on extra things to help incent give incentives to their students and give them the necessary tools they need to be successful in school. That's a big part of the reason Alachua County has partnered with the School Board of Alachua County on the Tools for Schools program. The program is now in the midst of its summer donation drive. The supply drive begins now in July and runs until the middle or end of August. Uh, so we will be collecting these school supplies from all over the county. We have um, about 40 businesses set up right now to collect donations for us. We're very low on new school supplies uh, right now. So pens, pencils, glue sticks, notebooks, paper. Helpful donations aren't limited to what a student may carry in a backpack. Teachers sometimes are looking for things other than just school supplies. We sometimes are looking for incentives for our students to do even better in school. Maybe it's a good reading book. Maybe it's a backpack. Maybe it's a school box to carry pencils and pens in. 
Uh, maybe it's a toy car or a stuffed animal. All of these things are incentives or tools that teachers can use to help our students be more successful. A lot of times businesses will donate old office supplies to us and we don't often think about that, but our teachers have a very small budget that they have to buy all their ancillary supplies, whether it's things for the students themselves or even for the teacher, a stapler, a file, um, a pair of scissors. Those are all things that teachers buy out of their own pocket. So any of those kind of items are great to help us as well. And while you're helping out students and their teachers, you may also be helping to save space in our landfills. As important as supplying our teachers and students with the things that they need to be successful in learning, we're also diverting items from our landfill that would normally be destined for disposal. Perfectly good items, they still have life in them, they still have another use, and we want to get as much of that stuff out of the landfill as we can and be as sustainable as possible by using things until they're completely used. If you're interested in making a Tools for Schools donation, setting up a donation site, volunteering, or for more information, call 352-374-5213 or visit www.toolsforschools.alachuacounty.us. The 2010 hurricane season is here, and part of making sure that you and your family are ready is making sure your pets are ready. Here are some tips from the Federal Emergency Management Agency to keep your animals safe during an emergency. It takes just three steps to get your entire family, including your pets, ready for an emergency. When considering your pets, you'll need to get a pet emergency supply kit, make an emergency plan for your pet's care, and stay informed about different types of emergencies. To get started, go to ready.gov to get a list of everything your family and pet emergency supply kit should contain. What are we going to do about the pets? Should we go back to the, the ready.gov and see what we're going to do about our pets? Great idea. In addition to what you'll need for your family, your pets will also need specific supplies. Okay, we've got the stuff that we need for us for our emergency kit. I've got the water and the food and the first aid kit. What do we need for Dakota? Well, I've got the brochure from ready.gov, so let's go through the list. Food, at least three days. Christopher, can you get the food? I'll put it in the kit. Just hand it to me. Great. And water for three days. Once you've got everything together, put all the pet supplies in a container that you can carry with you if you need to leave home in an emergency. And we need medicines and medical records. Okay, can you get that? Remember, pet food and medicine can spoil, just like our food and medicine. So you should check your kits regularly to make sure all the pet supplies are still fresh. she like this one. That's great. I think we've got food, water, medicine, something to play with, and our crate. Good girl. Good girl. If there's an emergency, you may be able to stay in your home or you may have to evacuate. It's important to have a family emergency plan that considers the needs of your pet for either situation. Oh, that's good. So let's call some kennels and see what they might do. Here's why. If you have to evacuate, take your pets with you. But keep in mind that some shelters won't allow pets inside. Prepare ahead of time by calling your local office of emergency management to see if any shelters in your area will take pets. You should also contact kennels, veterinary hospitals, and hotels to see if they'll take pets during an emergency. In addition, develop a buddy system with neighbors, friends, or relatives to care for each other's pets. You'd agree that you would take our pets, and then we would agree that we would take yours. It's a great idea. Pet locator decals can alert first responders that there are pets inside your home. And you might want to consider having your veterinarian microchip your pets to help identify them in an emergency. 
It leaves that microchip in under the skin, and then when you use a scanner, which is capable of reading that microchip, a unique number comes up on the scanner face, then that information can be used to reunite an animal with its owner, which is, again, one of our ultimate goals if an animal does get separated. At ready.gov, you'll find links to local information that will help you learn about the types of emergencies that could affect your family and pets. The information will help you know what to do in case of any emergency, natural or man-made. You'll find everything you need to prepare yourself, your family, and your pets for an emergency at ready.gov. It's as simple as one, two, three. Now let's take a look at the news from around the county. The Alachua County Environmental Protection Department has added a pedestrian bridge to the Mill Creek Preserve. The bridge not only merges parts of the Mill Creek Nature Preserve trail system, it also merges art and nature. We're in Mill Creek Preserve and we're extending the existing trail system to uh, expand into the hardwood hammock. And this, is a, this addition is really intimate. It's a narrow trail system. Uh, we needed to cr cross this Townsend branch that eventually flows into Mill Creek and then that eventually flows into Mill Creek Sink. But uh, this is a tributary to Mill Creek and what we wanted to do was build a bridge that was kind of unique and implemented a lot of reuse principles um, and also some functional art principles. Well, uh, the fact that it was out in nature, we wanted to do something that was kind of copacetic with the environment, like you said, instead of something just your standard industrial type construction. The pedestrian bridge is just one of many ongoing endeavors by Alachua County Environmental Protection staff to enhance the approximately 1,200 acre Mill Creek Preserve that was bought in 2002 as the first Alachua County Forever land acquisition utilizing funding from the Alachua County Forever Bond and Florida Communities Trust Grant. Visitors to Mill Creek Preserve need to be relatively self-sufficient. Um, there's a parking lot, a trailhead, there's maps, there's brochures. Uh, the trail system is marked with different color-coded trails. Um, you just, uh, just grab a brochure from the trailhead and you're able to uh, navigate through the site rather well. Uh, we, we have, it's really set up for passive recreation for hikers and to just enjoy the nature. Uh, that's available here. We don't have bathroom facilities or water. You'd have to bring your own drinking water. The trails at Mill Creek Preserve are open from sunrise to sunset 365 days a year. For more information about Mill Creek and other Alachua County Forever properties, go to the Alachua County website's environmental protection section and click on the land conservation link. For County Update, I'm Shelley Samick. The Alachua County Visitors and Convention Bureau, the University of Florida, and the Stephen C. O'Connell Center are hosting two Christian Congregative of Jehovah's Witnesses conventions over the summer. The events are an economic boon to the community's summer economy. It's all about economic impact and creating jobs and keeping hotel employees employed and restaurant, uh, restaurants busy and that kind of thing. It's about 7,000 people per conference. They stay here three nights. It generates uh, 6,000 room nights and our hotel industry, 2,000 rooms per night for three nights. So it's a huge economic impact. We estimate in direct dollars it's about $3 million into the community. After you do multipliers and stuff, it may be $6 million. And while Alachua County may not be the tourism mecca that Orlando is, it is still an attractive location for business and educational conventions. We don't have the attractions of Central Florida, but we don't have the distractions of Central Florida either. We, it's, if it's education that you're trying to do, if you're trying to create a message, this is a good place to come to, to sell that message. For more information on tourism and convention planning, call 352-374-5231. All through August and September, Alachua County Public Works Waste Alternatives will be helping shoppers to buy smart. Buy smart stands for saving money and reducing trash. 
The program will be visiting area supermarkets to spread the waste reduction message. Buy Smart focuses on using the four R's when shopping, reduce, reuse, recycle, and rethink, and teaches shoppers to ask themselves questions about product packaging. We set up a table with different products that shoppers typically buy, different cereals, beverages, looking at packaging, looking at buying local, and all revolved around making the best choices for you and your family. And while you're saving your family money, you may also save some space in the landfill by changing your shopping habits. Shoppers who visit the Buy Smart table will receive a free canvas shopping bag or shopping bag clip and a Buy Smart pocket guide or comic book. For more information on Buy Smart, call 352-548-1296. Alachua County is going green this summer, literally. County government is partnering with local farmers, businesses, and civic groups to create an organic garden in downtown Gainesville at the County Administration Building. The goal is to promote a healthier, more energy efficient, and self-sufficient community. Early one July Saturday morning, county employees, organic farmers, civic groups, and a whole lot of area high school students came together on the north lawn of the Alachua County Administration Building. The reason? To sow the seeds of something good. Alachua County is working to build a downtown farmer's garden today. Uh, so we've got a whole crew of volunteers from the uh, Young Entrepreneurs in Leadership and Sustainability to help us uh, put together this organic garden. The goal is to promote a healthier, more self-sufficient, and energy-efficient community. Agriculture is, is a very big consumer and user of, of energy. You know, conventional agriculture uses pesticides from petroleum-based fertilizers, pesticides. Organic agriculture can clearly be part of the solution to many of our current problems. The benefits of, of supporting food production on county lands include really enabling our county residents to have access to higher quality food that is produced locally, which means it has a lower carbon footprint. It's, it's not coming from 3,000 miles away from California like the majority of the foods that you find in the grocery store are coming from. So uh, producing food on your own lands means that you have food security. It's just the idea of local sustainability, of resilience to the challenges that face us as a community, and a renewed citizenship to be involved and change the future for Alachua County. The downtown garden project was suggested by the county's Energy Conservation Strategies Commission and led to a partnership with Florida Organic Growers Incorporated and the downtown Gainesville Rotary Club. The genesis on the county side came from the work that was conducted by the Energy Conservation Strategies Commission. Very early on, they saw the linkage between food energy and energy that comes from petroleum products and from fossil fuels. And so if we can become more independent of, of inputs and imports of, of food from other communities. We can have healthier food, tastier food, and better food. We applied for a grant from the Downtown Gainesville Rotary Club, and we were awarded a grant from the Downtown, Downtown Gainesville Rotary at the same time we were approached by Sean McClendon to develop this garden in Alachua County. So the timing was really perfect for us to apply the funding from the Downtown Gainesville Rotary for this project and uh, really cooperate with a lot of community partners. We contributed $4,000 totally, uh, 2,000 of which came from our district through a grant, what we call a, a district simplified grant, and then the other 2,000 came from the uh, Wild Game Feast proceeds. We thought this would make a nice community project, and uh, here it is indeed. But making it all finally come together meant a lot of hard work for volunteers. I arrived at 10 a.m. only to find out that young people had been here since 6.30 a.m. preparing the grounds and planting. So um, this speaks well of our next generation, so it's wonderful. We were involved with Florida Organic Growers last summer, and our program centers heavily on community service and being engaged in different volunteering work around the community, so we had the opportunity to come out this weekend. I think it's really important to be focused on sustainable food systems and local food and helping people to understand exactly what's going on and where their food comes from and how it's grown. It is all about young people. That's why a lot of our work historically has been even in school gardens, nutrition education, looking at, at how we can work with kids and to see the young folks, high school kids out here today is really inspiring. You know, we, we as a society are so quick to, uh, to condemn young people, to say they don't care, that all they're doing is playing video games. You have a, you have a whole crew of, of young high school kids here that do care, that are 
starting to become more aware and as we as a society nurture that community involvement, those good practices of health, of environmental awareness, I think it bodes well for the future. Working alongside county facilities management, abundant edible landscapes, Dragon Rise's College of Oriental Medicine, Home Depot, and 10 other partnering organizations, the University of Florida Young Entrepreneurs for Leadership and Sustainability were certainly not working alone. When the time came to plant, the downtown garden quickly came together, and organizers took the opportunity to thank the participants. The garden truly is a community effort. I think it's a great thing to be doing on a Saturday morning. I think it's an awesome way to get the community together. Working with nature and being outside, and it's really, it's really lovely. We just wanted to be part of the community, and um, we had the opportunity to contribute to the garden today. There have been a lot of planning, a lot of effort going into it, a lot of changes during the planning, so it's really exciting to be here and to do this. I'm ready to get my hands dirty. One of the exciting things today is to see the different age groups that have come together on this project. You know, uh, citizenship uh, is not just voting, it's also being involved in the community. So to see a group like the Rotary Club, one of our staunch civic organizations, uh, take part, and also a younger group like the UF uh, Entrepreneurs for Sustainability group that's worked here since 6.30 in the morning to do this garden. To see those kind of groups come together is a very positive sign for the community and it's a very a great thing to see the intergenerational cooperation. The garden is intended to function as a positive example and a living classroom, teaching people how to grow healthier foods and hopefully encouraging people to eat healthier foods. It will also contribute to local food banks and charitable organizations. The county commission has um, a health element that has been added to the comprehensive plan. This, to me, is, is just an embodiment or an extension of, of really implementing that element. And um, as you know, the Healthy Communities Committee has been looking at uh, childhood obesity as an issue. And so this way, we will have actually a classroom down here so that people can come, uh, learn about community gardens, um, and bring students on tours and students will be able to take that information and take that information back home. We, we've got to uh, plant the garden first and grow the fruit and vegetables and uh, we'll be working with our, our local food banks and charity organizations to help us distribute the food but we also want to work with youth groups uh, to teach them about the benefits of raising their own, uh, own food, raising their own fruits and vegetables uh, as well as teaching kids about how to use rain barrels, how to use uh, compost in their gardens so it, it'll be a, a variety of projects we want to offer in this space and really turn it into a, a, a civic venue for the rest of Alachua County. For information about the Downtown Farmer's Garden, contact Sean McClendon at smcclendon at alachuacounty.us or call 352-548-3765. For County Update, I'm Alan Yetter. That's all the time we have on today's show. Thanks for watching. And join us again for County Update, right here on your local government connection.